You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. Oh, Maria Menounos and Bing.com present... Live from the Kari Feinstein Oscar Style Lounge at the world-famous Mondrian Hotel on Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles, California. And streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Movie Edition. Tonight's AfterBuzz movie is Moneyball. We'll break down everything from the making of Moneyball to behind the scenes and everything in between. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite movie. It's AfterBuzz TV's Moneyball. Well, hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another AfterBuzz TV podcast. We're here at the Kari Feinstein Oscar Style Lounge's Gift Suites at the Mondrian Hotel in Suns on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood, go. California. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Okay, for the next few days, we're going to be podcasting here. We're talking about movies. We'll have, we've will have we had a few stars come by already. We, you never know who's going to be coming in. We'll hopefully get them to sit down with us, chat with us about the movies, get their take, their reactions to the experience and being in the films themselves. So until then, I'm your host, John Comerford, and I'm joined on the panel by Steve Bottomley. Hello. We've got Kim Lai here. Hey. And Christopher Joseph. Hello. And what we'll be talking about first is Moneyball. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Enjoy. Uh, first of all, just initial reactions. Let's get into it a little bit, and then we'll really dissect it. So <laughs> I, I, I was surprised by how much I like that. I'm a sports guy anyway. I like sports. But more than that, I like film. And I thought this was a, a, a first, I don't even know how they adapted the book with all the stats. But I really liked this movie. I, I, I liked it more than I thought I would. Well, and you were saying earlier that you actually liked the mathematical part I about did. it. I did. I found out the reason why before this movie, I yeah. didn't actually like baseball as yeah. much as I thought I did. I don't get me and math. We yeah, do don't not and, go and well together. Of all the it's sports, like baseball is all stats. I mean, that's yeah, what it it's is. really the percentages about. percentages of all the aspects. Oh, it's crazy. The but outfield, the batting. The right. Was it was it so statistical though before? Yes. Oh yeah. The always. Came always. Out with this From day movie? one. Oh, okay. Say that word again. Yeah. Saber Saber metrics. Statistical. That's yeah. a big word. I, I thought it oh, was. Oh look, it, we've got somebody here already. Uh, I won't be. Well, let's bring him on up. Hey. Oh, Mr. we're we're Steven privileged. Yeah. We got Come Steven on up. Yeah, here we go. This has been great. Bye. All right. Is, so, is he good to go? Yeah. So, well, uh, until he steps, I just want to say real quick, I thought it was a perfect blend of baseball mm -hmm. and just the, the fascinating human story about the people that are trying yeah. to change the game. The story behind within. the game. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, about and, one man. And, and not a real huge baseball fan, but after this movie, I'm kind of like going, I think I, I've got a little bit more. You're going to give it another try. I thoroughly enjoyed it as well. And here we have mm -hmm. stepping in with us is Mr. Stephen Bishop. Here we are. Thank you so Bishop. much. Mr. Bishop. Oh, very pleasant to have you. How are you? Yeah. How are you, sir? Nice to meet you too. Steve, of course, Steve, of course, played Derek Justice. David Justice. Not, sorry, what did David you Justice. Say? I just oh, I had a brain freeze. Beg your pardon. Just say DJ. Yeah. Yeah. I know yeah. I'm here. Okay, right. So, but uh, big shoes to fill in the baseball world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and uh, who was telling me that he talked about having you play him? Yeah. What was the story? I was watching an interview and um, of you. <laughs> And you were saying how you had you had met with David Justice, and he had said that I wouldn't have anyone else play the part but you. Right, that was after I had already booked it. Ah. David and I have been friends so for about <laughs> 16 years. Okay. Uh, when I was a minor leaguer with the Braves, he was right? a major leaguer, and you know the resemblance was so uncanny that you know everybody was talking about it, and I was getting confused for him, but, you know, walking around the the complex, and so. You know, he took me under his wing and was telling everybody, hey, look, this is my little brother. You, know, <laughs> you, you, treat, you treat him like you treat me. It, it right. works. And so, you know, David and I have been friends for a long time. So when I booked the job, I told him that, you know, I called him and I told him, hey, you're never going to guess who's playing you in a, in, a, in a film. And he's like, you know, that's when he said, you know, I, I couldn't think of anybody that I'd rather have do it. Wow. Did he give you amazing. any pointers? Like, did he help you out with, I mean, I know you were already a professional player, but did he give you any words of advice or wisdom on playing him in the movie? Um, like, no. you better do that. You better no. make sure you don't do that. <laughs> no, he, you know, he knew that I was going to do my best to make him look as good as possible because uh, we're, we're really good friends. And uh, what I did do was uh, get some insight from him as to where his mind state was in that point of his career. Uh huh. You know, right. did you know this was going to be your last year? Did you think you were going to play more? That kind of thing. Um, what was your relationship with with Billy Bean like? Really? Uh, what was your relationship like with the rest of the players? Were you a leader in the club? That kind of thing. Just to know 
where he was coming from at the time. So right. it, that was very helpful. But from uh, other than that, he he really just let me do my thing. That's and, great. You know, it was nice. it, it, fortunately it came out well. It came nice. out very well. Yeah, I love the batting cage scene. I mean, you had, oh, the, yeah. you had great swagger, yeah. and that's I mean, you, that was, do, you do you do cocky well. Attitude, though. That was <laughs> nice. Good attitude. That's funny. No, really good. <laughs> no, it was it was a great scene between the there two. Were, there were, that's where the, the real meat of I feel like your relationship with Billy Bean kind of took hold. Yeah, you know, when I read the script, I, I looked at that scene and I was like, okay, that's going to be the, the point in the movie for for this character yeah. that makes or breaks him. Right. And. Uh, you know, fortunately, when we started when we started filming that, I wasn't supposed to be hitting. I was, I was supposed to hit and then stop. Okay. And then when we started to film, I talked to Bennett before you know after the uh, the uh, rehearsal. Yeah. I said, how about I just keep hitting yeah. through the scene yeah. and I'll talk in between swings. Now, were you actually cracking the balls? Yeah. Oh yeah. You were yeah. really yeah. hitting them, yeah. right? Oh yeah. Okay. I, and the reason I said that to him in? was because no, no, that's no, I, I meant the sound. You know, like yeah, the reason uh, I asked him about that because I was hitting so well yeah. at the moment. Yeah, I was like, you know what? Let's just do it. Yeah, I'm hitting. I'm squaring up the ball perfectly right now. So let's run it through. Yeah. He's like, are you sure you're gonna be able to hit all of them on cue and not? And I'm like, yeah. it feels good right now. Let's yeah, try it. exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, serendipity came in and it allowed me to just hit. I hit every single ball wow. right on the screen. I'm telling you, it was incredible. And I mean, when I watched yeah. the movie again just today before we yeah. came in. And that is one of my favorite scenes, just watching you crack crack the balls, locking in on Billy Bean. I'm just like, is it, it, he really hit Yeah, it seemed, it, it seemed like that. that's how it really happens. They take a swing, they talk, they take a swing, they talk. Yeah, and mojo. I got to say, did you, because you have a very sweet swing. That looked amazing. Could, did you, I appreciate it. We were talking about you, that. Was that your swing? Yeah, that was yes. my swing. Or, or did, are you but, emulating justice? Oh this is the thing. Ah, I was I was emulating David's swing because he's got a very because I'm a right-handed hitter. Oh my god! And he's left-handed. I did not. So that's great. I had switch. Yeah, I'm hitting you on the other okay. side. That's you had the ball. You were cracking the ball and you were switched up. Yeah. Oh dude. Oh, that's yeah. impressive. I mean, that's I have impressive. to give some credit to. Uh, well, first of all, as a kid, when you play, I played baseball all my life. Sure. And as a kid. I grew up playing a game called All Star, where it would be me and one of my buddies, uh -huh. and we would each pick a National League and sure. an American League All Star, All -Star. team. Okay. And when you hit, you had to, you hit, had like to hit like that guy. Oh. So you know, I spent oh, so my whole life switching oh. back and forth, yeah. back and forth. Yeah. And then when I, uh, yeah, this is nothing. when I, as I grew up, I. You know, I for some reason was able to stay left. You know, my left-handed swing stayed good. Yeah. I think my mother, my mother actually taught me how to hit when I was two years old. Okay. And my mother's left-handed. Okay. So, what happened was she taught me how to hit left-handed. And when I was four, I was in daycare, and there was a, a little league park outside of my daycare. And I wandered away from daycare into the little league park, nice. and I asked the coach if I could play. Nice. And he let you know, he humored me, and he let me play. <laughs> And I got in the box with a left-handed grip, but on the right side. Okay. And so instead of turning me around, I know, he, we're like, he said, what? oh, no, son, you've got your hands backwards. So in that moment, oh. he turned me into a right-handed hitter. Wow. And so I never like went back. I, I was like, so yeah, and he made me go here. And yeah. so from that like point, I never hand. went back and became a right-handed yeah. hitter. Oh, my but, God. But the, for some reason, the the mechanics of hitting yeah. left-handed came so natural, I think, because I well, learned it first. Well, it you, showed you, in that scene. Yeah, man. That was, you had me fooled. I, I have to give sure. credit, though, for uh, to Chad Kruder, who's uh -huh. the technical advisor for the film. And he's also the, the former head coach at USC. Uh, my, Chris Pratt and myself worked out at USC every day for three weeks before we started yeah, filming. Right. So that I had a chance to groove my left-handed swing because I couldn't yeah. just go in and swing. It had to look like a major league okay, superstar yeah. swing. Yeah. You got your muscle memory back as an actor and a, as an athlete. That's that that's was me. a point that one of the producers had made was since baseball fans are so rabid about accuracy yeah. and about stats and everything that they were really concerned about the fans saying, "I can't get in this movie because." He's not doing it right, yeah. and, the, and that yeah. Major League yeah. Baseball yeah, worked great. really closely with them yeah. to make yeah. sure that all of that was just right. Yeah. So, and, yeah. With, with David, he has a really distinctive swing, you know, yes. and there's movements in his swing that, you know, he's famous for, like the, right. the high That's leg right. kick, yeah. and then the foot. If you notice when 
you remember the scene where they they walk me? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. yes. And, and I and I, I kick my foot out. Yeah. Before I step down, that's before his move. Down, that's his right, move. Right. When, oh, I, no, when I throw the bat. And yeah, take the I remember. Pad off, and you just, that's yeah. his move. Yeah, you know the the whole well, stance and talking to himself. You me when you came that's in. Right. I was like, did they just serve that someone? Yeah, that I mean, great. it really is uncanny. It's yeah, uncanny. it's, it's okay, weird. Question: so, Does he hit switch? Yeah. Can he hit switch? You know, I don't think he can. I don't think he can. We play golf, and he's that, a left-handed golfer. Okay. Uh, so I haven't seen him even hit a, a golf ball right hand. I don't think he. I don't think he's a switch hitter. Well, you got um, something on him. But why? Why would he be? He is a no, you know, no. A superstar I know. I just on the left to side. Be. Knowing your story, I'm kind of like oh, you got one up on him. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You, you know, he used to be married to Halle Berry. Absolutely. You know, well, and now okay. he's got another beautiful wife, yeah. Rebecca. I was he's, giving you props. You just went. <laughs> yeah. No. He, yeah. I. So we got a long way to catch up today. Let's talk a little bit about you being on set and how that process was for you. Did you enjoy the experience of that set? Oh, I loved it. Yes. Yeah. The thing about that set for me was it was a lump of everything I had ever done mm -hmm. and everything yeah. I had ever wanted to do right. in one in one big ball. Mm -hmm. You know, I was playing baseball, I was playing in a stadium that I grew up going to games right. to watch. I was playing for a team that I grew up watching. Yep. I was playing my, you know, my teenage idol <laughs> and I was doing it opposite Brad Pitt. You it's know, like the moon's it, yeah. alive. Yeah, yeah, everything my mother called it serendipity, you know. Yeah, what I mean? and really. Truly. I, I I couldn't have asked for a better opportunity, and you know, fortunately, everything came together. And, yeah. and I just want to say, and you held your own against Brad Definitely. Pitt in that batting. Yeah, and yeah, we keep going one. back to that scene, but that was a scene where I'm looking at both of those actors. I'm going, they're on equal ground right there. Well, that's pretty wow. sad. I, really I thought the power yeah, of that you. scene thank really you. was on your in your corner. It was because and if you don't, if we don't buy that, you you finally go, okay, I don't know what you're doing here. I'm not really buying into it. But that by the end of the scene, you bought into it. If you don't buy into it. As an audience, we don't buy into it. And yeah, and, and it rests the, on your shoulders. The way you bought into it, you just gave kind of a real subtle sort of, okay, was there a discussion about how much to give up in that moment? Did, did you and Bennett kind of go, did, was he like on, I, it was such a subtle sort of minimalist, did it. great moment. No, you know, the thing about Bennett was he, he really let me, gave me space, you know, to just do what I did. And when we were shooting that scene, he actually came into the cage this is funny. He came into the cage in the middle of the scene and he's like, okay, listen, whatever you're doing, stay right there. He's like, this is awesome. He's like, you're going to love this. And he walked away and it was like, you know, That's all you needed to know. I knew that being in the comfort zone of hitting while I was doing it right. was going to make me go back to my days as a player. Sure. And when a coach or a manager would come in and say something like that, there's a there's a, there's a, a sacred place, the batting cage, you know, yeah. when we're under the tunnel. It's, it's kind of like, hey, come on, let me do my work here. But I have to be honest, I knew that scene was going to be what you say it is. Yeah. And when, when I read it and when I was preparing for it, and I, I was a little nervous about it until Brad, after the first rehearsal, they say cut on rehearsal, Brad looks at me, looks me up and down, and he goes, huh, you got some skills, don't you? Pat me on the back and walked away. No! And how did you feel? What were you thinking? I, yeah. What I did was I looked, I looked around. Did, did anybody else see that? Anybody see that? Anybody? Like, oh, anybody? No. I was like, Brad Pitt just gave me so much love. <laughs> okay, let's run, let's run it. Let's run it. Because awesome. to have the guy who's carrying the film yeah. sure. give you that kind of love, right. yeah. it puts so much confidence in me that I, I felt free to do yeah. whatever it is I felt at the moment. And my acting, you know, I'm not a, a formulaic actor. I, I go strictly on instinct. And what you see there was uh, instinct. You, know you I mean? used the confidence. I mean, it just spewed out of you, and it was just such a cool moment in the film. So congratulations. I, thank that. you that so was, much. Did you know excellent. after reading the script that, that, is, that you wanted to do this film, or did you have to think about it for a little bit? I got to be honest. I knew that, OK. <laughs> I had a strong belief that this was my part before I read the script. Uh -huh. Wow, really? Yeah. I've said for a long time that if they ever made a movie about baseball and David Justice was in it, I'd be playing him. I look exactly like the guy. We are, I mean, when we first met, we were, it was eerie how much we looked alike. Mm -hmm. Plus, I, you know, I, I well, knew so much too. about him. Yeah. I, I copied you grew his up swing, with him. I grew up mm -hmm. watching Watch him and yeah. knowing him, and then he's my, he's my big brother, you know. It just, I knew. I, there was a part of me that knew. 
I was sitting in my agent's office uh, and I got a text that said, hey, there's a movie called Moneyball and there's a part called For David Justice. You might want to look into it. <laughs> Mike wanted to do that, baby. And I looked at my agent and I said, hold. <laughs> I said, forget what we're talking about right now. Yeah. We have to call them. We have to call this casting office immediately and tell them I got to come in. Right then and there on the spot, we sent them pictures. We actually put pictures of me and him together yeah, and nice. sent them over there. And within two days, I had an audition. That's amazing. Yeah. So, how was the audition? Okay. Right, because right. they 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 um, went after a lot of athletes. So there was over a thousand. To, right. Not just now, for that part, when but you in went general. in, did they know about your chops or skills and wanted to see if you could act, or did they go, "Well, you're an actor that looks like him, but can you play baseball?" I mean, what well, was that like? Where you had to prove two things to these guys? I went in as an actor. Okay. Um, a lot of the guys that you saw in the film went in for baseball tryouts first. Sure. And then they came and to see if they could act at all. I went in as an actor and had two auditions before I ever had to swing a bat or throw. Really? Okay. Wow. They knew I was a professional. You know, they knew that I was, a, I mean, a professional baseball player. They knew that. So they were like, okay, we don't need, really need to worry about his skill, his skill set. Um, but my acting was what they wanted to see. They wanted to see, right. could I carry this part? Could I go up against Brad Pitt and Jonah and hold my own? You know, could I do this type of And I had been acting for a long time. So it was, it was like I said, again, serendipitous. I mean, I was in the right place in, in my life and in my career at the right time. And, um, you know, it was funny. I knew, that when I say I knew, when we did the first audition, they asked me about my baseball skills and my experience. And I, you know, I told them what I had done. And I told him how I knew David, and I say, you know, I have to say this because this is how I feel. There's no one on earth more prepared to play this role than I am, unless you go get David. Which <laughs> There's that cool. swagger and it that confidence again. Yeah. And you know, and, you know, maybe Bennett saw that and yeah. was like, you know what? I That's need the that. guy. Well, <laughs> you know? this is perfect. I'll say, I won't forget the the humor part of the. I call it the Fruit Loop scene. Oh yeah, that was great. Was Apple it Apple Jacks? Apple Jacks. Oh, and, you know, I actually My requested favorites. them to put Apple Jacks in that bowl nice. because I was like, I look, like if it. I'm gonna sit here and eat this, yeah, it's gonna it to be, be my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody was eating yeah. in that yeah. movie. Good luck with that. Yeah, hey, good luck. You know, and that I'll be honest with you, that was improv. Oh, was it? That line? Oh, it was okay. perfect. It was, it was hey, we got perfect. a question for you. Go ahead. So, um, for the beginning of the season, when you're now on the team, or Dave Justice's character, there's one banner hanging. Oh, uh, one My banner. My question is, was that banner there, and did you get to take it home? That banner was there. Uh -huh. um, I was offered to take it home, but I turned it down uh -huh. because it was so big <laughs> that, that, that there would be nothing I could do with it. Yeah, okay. with and then somebody said, you know what? You could make it like the carpet in a room or something. <laughs> they were talking about a bed spread. Well, they were like, you know, we could have you that banner and make sailboat. it a bed spread. You turn it into one of the well, sails now, now I'm on the hunt to get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Listen, we can't thank you so much for stopping by. Congratulations. Well-deserved part. Absolutely. No, There was nobody better that could play that part. Part, uh, really just made that uh, really just brought a whole realness and naturalness to it which is the whole movie's about that yeah. and I thought you just blended that in so nicely so congratulations well, no thank you. you for having me I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Maria and you know I uh, anything for her Stephen Bishop thank, thank you so you much. much thank you so thank much you guys for having me. Right. it's a pleasure talking with you right. thank you thank you right. that was intense so awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so here's what's wonderful about that is when you discover the guy that you're watching on screen is just as cool uh, in person somebody as you're hoping he is. Well that's just it. I mean and I gotta say, like when he when I'm watching him play you know, it, it was. It was like, it was David Justice. Yes. Yeah. There was no disputing it. And again, I, but what I mentioned in the thing is that the producers were really concerned about fans not being able to get into the movie because they're so, you know, they've got such, baseball fans have such eagle eyes about stats, about yeah. mm -hmm. whether including it's were the laces intertwined with the pants. Oh, I mean, yeah. and they, they were scouring all of it's all, all over the, the web. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, it was they, were crazy. Talking, they said Michael Fisher, who he's credited with like the blind side, was the one who was doing the casting. Mm -hmm. And they had over a thousand people come out for the tryouts. And they were right. specifically asking for um, people that not only could act, but did have some yeah. sports background. I'm and people that had sports background. There's nothing worse than watching sure. a sports movie. And you know, he's like, oh my God. Right. Oh my God. Especially to be honest, this I'd movie. I'd rather pull in. 
I mean, I don't know. There, there's kind of a flip side to every story, but, you know, do you look for the actor first and right. then the, the athletics? Or do you look Me? for the athletic, athleticism I think first? You, I think you look for that because you can, you can adjust some things in post. You can right. get some editing. Yes. You can you yes. can help. Yeah. You can help. But you can't fix bad athletics. No. No, you can't. Absolutely There's not. There's nothing you can do unless it's CG. Not. Yeah, unless yeah. you have I a lot that. of money to make yeah. that That's why I like reality. watching sport movies. You sport know, movies, yeah. I mean, it's like Friday Night Lights, you know, right. same kind of thing. I'm a big fan of that show. And yeah, no, Stephen Bishop was in Friday Night Lights. And actually, yeah, Stephen yeah, Bishop was in that too. Absolutely. So. so Sounds uh, familiar. Okay, now speaking of the sports movie, now, there's a lot of, everybody thinks this is a sports movie. It's really not a sports movie. It just no. happens to happen in the world of baseball. Mm -hmm. It's got very little baseball in it if you're thinking it's a sports movie. Let's talk a little bit about the journey it took to become the movie. First, it started from yeah. the book yes. by My written by Michael Lewis called Moneyball, uh, uh, How to Win in a, a Rigged Game, I think is what it's called. Um, and then it went an through... An unfair game. An unfair game, thank you. Was an option. They had writers on it. They had mm -hmm. other writers on it. They had directors on it. They had other directors on it. So I went through a bunch of different incarnations, and it strikes me the metaphor there is that just like fielding, just like Billy Bean had to field the team, mm -hmm. they had to field a crew and a cast to get mm -hmm. this thing made because it just didn't seem like it was ever going to make it to the big it, screen. Three, two, no, two directors before it finally ended right. up with Bennett. Right. Correct. Bennett Miller, mm -hmm. who had previously directed Capote, uh, was, Capote uh, and, and was nominated for an Oscar for that as well. I, remember I was yeah. watching an interview with him, and he said, you know, it's pretty simple. He goes, just build it, and they'll come. And he yeah. goes, I'm going to take a simple approach I mean, right. at thing. making this movie. But, and already had Brad on board. Yes, and already had Brad on board. But it, and, and Brad kind of start, brought him in. If you start this project and you take that book and say, well, it's a book about math. Let's make math exciting. Yeah. You will you, never get it off the ground. No, 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 I don't no. know which writing team it was, but the ones who finally discovered, you know, sure, it's it's a story about baseball and math, but you've got a winning streak in here that they're yes. going for. And you've got the father and his, his daughter. Do that relationship and start as well. To work yeah. All of the other aspects together. Mm -hmm. And you wrap it around Jonah and his, you know, his yeah. take on the Sabermetrics. math and everything. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's what when it said, clicked. they took the gloss off. Yeah, the whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing. They stripped it down. Deglossed it, de shinied it, made it, made it very dirty, naturalistic. In fact, they were talking about the way it was shot. We'll, we'll talk about the way it was mm -hmm. shot and then we'll go back to the script because I yeah. have to talk about the script. But since you talked about the deglossed, it's one of the reasons why he brought in Wally Pfister, who's a cinematographer. Mm -hmm. He's known for, of course, Inception, won the Oscar for that. But he's also, he comes out of news and documentaries. And if you notice in the, in the uh, scene where they have all the scouts talking, very documentary style, very yes. all natural, well, not natural, all fluorescent lighting, so they got that feel there. And they didn't want to do anything with gloss. They wanted to use the natural light as much as possible and augment it where they could yeah. to and make it makes you it look feel more realistic, though. Rather you than do you feel like you're in that into room. This rather that than a story more. being told right. to you, it's kind of you observing the story, which is a big difference in in, in how one experiences it. Yeah. And then the other thing they did with the lighting is, is as you were talking about, during the outside scenes, especially in the, during the baseball scenes, the stadium scenes at night. He shut down half of the lights. Yeah. Normally, in, a, in, a, in an arena like that, all the lights are up, everything's really mm -hmm. bright, yeah. and everything's flat. And he didn't think that created the right mood. Uh -huh. And in fact, I, I believe, if I'm correct, uh, Bennett didn't, wasn't sure about that. He was like, I don't want to. Well, it's well, not going to well, look real. Though for the film, basically, one but it worked for the film. I, I don't know if it's Bennett kind of or Fester, but, but one of them said, look, the, the stadium is a character in this. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got to present it as it, mm -hmm. it is a living, it's breathing right. entity. Mm -hmm. You and working with the lighting yeah. and, and the different shots they got, you did yeah. get that. When when the Billy being the character walks out and lies down on the ground, yeah. and the way that they did that just through video, those were the little moments where they were really able to capture that whole feel. Yeah. Uh, it's Absolutely. this huge game, but it boils down to one guy on a field yeah. just the of the stadium. trying his best. That's it's a really good point. I yeah. even like the when you're talking about the stadium being a character. I mean, you get right. a really good glimpse of that when they actually lose yeah. the last game of the series. Oh, spoiler alert! The, the players start <laughs> fading out. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, the right. crowd starts fading out. Yes. You're zooming in on the on the dugout. Well, Everything it becomes a very small closer. movie after that moment it is, because yeah. it really is only about two guys. Yeah. Well, and there are two, there are things yeah. that are very interesting. They, Bennett Miller said that Billy Bean has the weight of the world on his shoulder. He's an underdog, and to, to physically represent that, that's why they shot everything underground, underneath the stadium. All his office, oh. his locker room, all that stuff with the fluorescent lights is to make him feel like he's always, he, they called it the submarine. 
So that's what that was to make you feel okay. like he's under he's an underdog. Right? Only when he's in oh, yeah, only when he's in the arena do you see real life. And then couple that with at the end of the movie. Nice. He spent most of the time in Oakland. Blue collar, you see the you know the loading dock, all that yes. kind of stuff. Yes, very industrial. When you, then he goes to Boston, Fenway Park, which is not not notorious. It's infamous, and it, I mean this is baseball hallowed ground. This is, you know, it's just like you know. It was so, still raining. And where does it? They, where in do they Boston. have the scene? They could have the scene anywhere. They could have the scene in in the in the owner's office. They had them in the boxes, right. way up high, overlooking the hallowed oh, ground. So, so you the got to see. What, that's right. Underdog. In this world, he's struggling to be the under. He's an underdog. He's struggling like crazy to make it to up here. And at the end of the movie, when he gets awarded that thing, it's way up top, looking out over how the green is. The grass is green. The, I mean, it's gorgeous. Right. And it's Fenway. As you know, opposed to Oakland Coliseum, you know what I mean? There was a moment in in the in the movie, and and we were first of all we lost a bit of time to talk about it because of that great time we got to spend with Stephen Bishop. But there was a moment in the movie when Brad Pitt comes at game twenty, right? And right. He's watching it during now, the streak. They won the nineteen streak. games in a row. Okay. This is their twentieth game. If they it win, isn't they win until the Jonah sees him there. Right. That bad thing started happening. And I've watched it a couple of times and I, I'm trying to think, is it because he showed up? Or is it because somebody knew he showed up? If, if no one had seen him, yeah. would all that have happened? I think it's because Jonah saw him yeah. show up. That's the way it seemed I like it was just, shot. It's because the way it was shot, exactly. The way it was shot, yeah. it just it allowed, it, it makes you believe but thing, that. It's like, but he didn't, know he, him, he didn't know he had been seen. No, but so. we did. <laughs> anyway, but I thought it was did. such and a great moment. Us. You know that, and that was the thing about this movie for me. You ended up thinking about so many things. Yeah. Yes. Batting cage so, scene, fact, this scene, saying? the scene the you're what? talking about about yeah. how it's all underground and it's above ground. Yeah, right? that, what that's was it? good. Rod Don, Lurie. I didn't even think of that. Rod Lurie tweeted, "Moneyball is so layered and brilliant. I can't imagine how this out survived research screenings. How this cut survived uh, research. How this, how this, how cut. this cut survived research screenings." <laughs> That's true. Because it's, it's so layered. Well, you're saying it's this true. is more of an yeah, independent absolutely. film. Yeah, it's an independent film from a studio. Yeah. Right. Because right. It's, then it's, it's first not, studio project, yeah. by the way. Yes, exactly. Because the last thing he did was, you know, uh, Capote, which was, not, was an independent. Yeah. And he had some trepidation about it, but he was obviously wanted to get into the movie. Uh, because, you know, he'd working on something else that fell through. So Box this thing came right in front of him. Right. That's actually and it's that. interesting because when he first read the stuff, he didn't know his way into the story either. He didn't know if he could tell the story. He did. Is it possible to tell the story from this book? And then the thing he read from either the book from by Michael Lewis where it said that uh, Billy Bean, the protagonist, wondered if he should be living a different life. And it was that thing that he started to, he goes, you know, I can tell a story about a guy like that. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing he goes, the other part of that was the sabermetrics thing, which is the whole statistical analysis that Billy I Bean pioneered and how he used that to, uh, yeah. you know, to, to create a contender. Yes. It also made him understand why he didn't fulfill his promise as a player. Because he was looked at at 15 as being the next phenom. Right. He had a, he First could, round traffic, right. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Skipped around about five different teams all before these, he ended up with the all A's. All these adults who have been in the in the baseball for decades are saying, "You're it, kid. You can do it. You can." Yeah. Well, yes. be right in there. And, in, and he really wanted to go to college. He wanted to go to Stanford. His mother wanted to go to Stanford, but he chose the other route. He went with the money. Yeah. And that was the other thing that Bennett picked the oh. check. He realized, aha, there's a check in the beginning. There's a check in the end. There's a decision here. There's a decision he here. Takes it here I can tell take this story. Now it becomes a personal story. Right. It just happens Absolutely. to be about baseball in that world, but it's really about a redemption. A guy knowing I made a mistake here in my life. It's led me here, and I've been striving like crazy to find the holy grail of winning the big game. Uh huh. And it, and in the end, he lets go of that and finds true value in himself right. and yeah. what he's really he was worth. Looking to yeah. course correct. And, and they wouldn't have been able to make this. Where he was leaving off. And, and it, whoever it was that finally d d figured out that story arc yeah. and, and that that journey, mm -hmm. uh, you have to assume that everything else just fell into place mm -hmm. yeah. because that's what they really needed to hang this whole story it, on. Because the other stuff is all that just they it out. Right. But it's that guy knowing, and and you know they never talk about it. They just show him. They show back flashes of him growing up and right. him, you know, being this phenomenal player that didn't yeah. meet up to his expectations. Right. And you know, and then you show this guy just, and he, he never says, "Gosh, I'm trying to right a wrong." 
you just see that it's just part of no, who he is. No, but you know it. You see he it happening it. throughout the show. Exactly. You don't have to say it. There was a lot you know? of really good points or lines in the movie. Yeah. Just, I'll never forget, well, one in particular is when the two New York Met scouts are sitting right. across the table from a young yeah. Billy Bean. Yeah. And they make the comment to the, to the point of, there, you're not going to know when, but at some point, you, you will not be right. able to, can you play in the we, children's game. Yeah, we all have girl. to leave. To that effect. Yeah. We don't know when, you, but you eventually. Know, I, I kind of struggled with that. I'm looking at that, okay, in the context of baseball. Yeah. And then I'm thinking, you know, we as individuals say when we're done, when we're done. Right. You know, and that moment right there was showing the influence uh-huh. of the... Um, Perhaps maybe the older generation with sure. baseball influencing sure. the younger generation and just kind of giving a little bit of lip service yeah. to get him to to play well, on. That's and right. they made mention in the movie too that no ball club in their right mind would have passed him up. Right. right. He could have gone anywhere. So that was also an interesting point when he's talking to um, the Jonah Hill character. Uh, he says, "Peter, Peter he says, would you have, would you have um, drafted me in the first round?" Yeah. I think he goes, no. No. Yeah, it's ninth, ninth, round. Round. Ninth, ninth round. Ninth round. Say what? Um, yeah. And you would have gone to college. He's like, yeah, I would have. Yeah. Okay. So there were these, those, again, those moments. But the That's all they had to do. But like yeah. you're talking about, the generational gap. You're talking yeah. about the older generation and the new generation. Well, and you also saw the scouts. Technology, room. sabermetrics. All the exactly. scouts were older scouts. They'd been right. in baseball longer than he had. Right. And they, they all knew what to do. And that scene in the locker room, not in the locker room, but in the hallway of down of the, the submarine, so to speak, outside the locker room, when he's having a conversation with the lead scout, right. he's saying, Billy, I don't know what you're doing here. And Billy says, look, I've been on that table. I've been at that table. You said, you're the next yes. thing. Yes. You know, exactly. and, and you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I know you don't know what you're talking about. And he knows it because he didn't m- m- match up to those expectations. No, exactly you're right. So, I, know, I mean, but how carry much that you through. You can't look at somebody. I mean, you don't know they really are yeah. or have everything and are going to be that person right. that you're drafting them to be. That's, that's well, fair, but that wasn't the conversation that right. was being held at that table. What was being held at the table was coercion from the scouts saying, this is your moment, and if you don't take it, you're going to miss it. And and, right. and yeah. he had to carry that with him. And it's interesting that Billy Bean, the real person, went into being a scout. And I don't know if that was kind of like, I don't want the you know, next kid... Right. Or if it's what I, it's the only thing I got well, to go with, but it was an interesting choice to go out of. Yeah, um, and, the, and the other thing I found interesting about that, later on, they, at some point they were talking about, um, uh, you, you never know, I, you, you need to have, they, he needs to have more at-bats. All the scouts were talking about, get this guy some more at-bats. Yeah. And Billy never got those, because he would jump in right so soon that he never got that seasoning that you might need. Mm-hmm. We're going to bring in a vendor right now. So we're we're we? And... I Are can tell you right now, I'm getting, I'm getting a little oh, hungry. Looks like, oh, looks like we're a few minutes. Oh, we're a few minutes. You know what popcorn? works best with a yeah. movie? Popcorn. What works really good with a movie? Best in a ballpark besides hot dogs. Yeah, yeah. Is popcorn. Well, Cracker Jacks. But if you can't get Cracker Jacks, look at that. I'm asking you shutters. What a stunning example. Please introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Jess. I come with gifts. Gifts. You come with We are sweet of you. This stuff is like crack for me. I really don't think you should have brought it. To no. whenever I'm eating or going food shopping, I uh-huh. will be carrying these around. Okay. I'm oh, cool. I want the chips. I want the chips. This is like catnip. I want the chips. There we go. Yes. So the brand is Top Green Indiana, <laughs> and these are their infamous <laughs> chips. <laughs> these are great. But why are you here oh, at the <gasps> gift suite? <gasps> why am I what? Because why are you at the Oscar Talk. style gift suite? So tell us about the Popcorn tell Indiana. Well, I'm. So How do you manufacture from, these babies? So they are based in Englewood, New Jersey. Uh-huh. Don't, don't be fooled by the name Popcorn Indiana, but they're, the corn's actually from Indiana. Uh, okay. Us. All right. Yeah, so they have tons of flavors. They also have sweet flavors as well. So if you're in the mood for a chocolate cake or a cinnamon oh. sugar. Oh. Oh. Wow. Okay, next time. I'll bring them next time. Okay. Yeah. So I'm craving salty, so that's why so I brought so. Does, it I'll give like my a address. potato chip okay, or yeah. popcorn? <laughs> so these are the actual popcorn, but they're oh. chipping. And that's where you started off with. Oh, that's why I was confused. These are Chips. I know all about you. Believe me, you I know, know all about you. Are the chips made, made from no, popcorn? This is good stuff. <laughs> yeah. yes. So the reason that so they came out with the chip ins, and yeah, no, they're all, they're all. Um, How many can you eat? Well, that's my other thing. That's why I'm here is because I'm obsessed. Oh my gosh, I'm tea. Is that a challenge? I mean, it's a girl. serving. Wait a minute, why are you yeah. obsessed about? So I'm obsessed with the fact I can't stop eating one chip, and also if you try it, you won't uh. either. 
So, so don't start if eating I have them like now. a bag, it's 260 calories. And I, like, For an entire bag? A huge bag. This whole thing is only 260 that was, calories? That was this like I say, oh. my house All is right. packed with mm. this. But it's still really good. Okay, do you have more? Oh, we have I'm more. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We have and you saw us all in the majors, right? We I mean, I've seen it at Whole Foods. So we'll oh, see this at all parts around the country? If you go to their website, popgrinindiana.com, and you type in your zip code, they'll tell you all stores that they're in. And they'll right. also nice. tell you, I'm not going to tell convenient. I'm not gonna tell what flavor, so they have a lot of flavors coming out. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so this check is out. Like the you don't want to hear You can tell me. I was going to say, anyway. check it out in about like two weeks, and you'll see. So we're the company that first ever launched Popcorn We will do that. Like, oh, wow. Popcorn Chips. Well, thank you. So much for okay. coming by. Oh, thank you for the gift. Thank you for me. Please Gobble remind everybody this, yeah. where you are. Enjoy. Thank you. Find, so remind much. everybody where they can go get things. Go to popcornindiana.com. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right. You're like my Terrific. popcorn fairy. Let's clear these. <laughs> All right. Now don't yeah, start eating. Man. Don't start eating these now. You'll never stop. Okay. Don't start eating. It's gonna sound horrible. It, it won't be able. To, we won't be able oh, to yeah. talk. Exactly. So, you want those? You might need to clear those for the camera view. So we were talking about. I don't remember what we were talking about. Something. Oh, that you needed to have seasoning to get his bat. Speaking of seasoning, seasoning. Uh, seasoning. Had to get enough bats in, and Billy didn't get that. And I thought that was interesting. Another parallel that they're playing with that he came in too soon. Had he not taken That's the check, true. he might have been gone on to have a great career. You never know. Sure. Right. But he went in too early. Influence. Yeah, which is why you know they're so careful about bringing young, great athletes into professionals because yeah. right. they're just not there. Right out of high school. It's, you know, it's, it's you a bit. Yeah. yeah. And, and talking about talking about the um, scouts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It was an interesting blend because some of the scouts were actors. Yes. And some, some of the scouts were, were scouts. actual scouts. Mm -hmm. And what was what I was really interested about was the two scouts that were at the young Billy Beans table. From the I could not tell if those were scouts or actors. Yeah. Because if they were actors, damn, they were really good at playing scouts. Right. But if they were scouts, they were really natural yeah. and, you know, just well, moving with that scene. If you are the real thing, I feel like if you just play off that experience, you just have to you do that, need yeah. to act. It just, yeah. And if you notice, but, uh, but also the way it was shot, that, but at, the way it was shot, they never really... Yeah, they were, the camera's out of there. It looked like the camera's out of their view, kind of like laying off, so they wouldn't have to worry about it being in their presence. Right. Yeah. And also, when they were doing the scout in the in the room, Billy Bean's room, his war room, so to speak. Right. It's very documentary, so he was like yeah. behind things, and so all the scouts had to do was just pick a name. Yeah. What do you think about this guy? And then they just spout their stuff. It just be themselves. And exactly. they said that, that, that there was a lot of footage in that room to get all that stuff. They did a lot, it. and they edited a lot of that. They kept that. finding nuggets here and there. They kept putting it in. So they had a lot of coverage on that, so. And you know the conversation was probably accurate, where they're talking yeah. about ugly girlfriend and stuff, and you're thinking, like, oh what? my God, they're making decisions on guys' careers based on some yeah. sort of... Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, because it says like confidence. baseball players, it's just like the entertainment business. I mean, well, yeah. here with matters. Dead, huh? Yeah, which well, it does. It does, matter for it the does sport. only to them, but it doesn't matter in your skill level. No, 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 so. no. But I think when you're hiring a professional player, I mean, it really, really matters. Okay. Everything matters. All right. Okay. Well, real quick, I want to just. That sounds terrible. We've though, got about ten minutes. Okay. We've got to talk about Jonah Hill. We've got to talk about Jonah. Right, we'll talk Jonah. You know, there's a ton of stuff to talk about this well, movie. Well, let's but first say, how did he get the role? How did Jonah get okay, the role? Okay, well, this was interesting. I watched an interview, and, you know, he is known for playing pothead characters. Schlubby. And he's, a little bit, you know, yeah. kind of comic relief kind of thing. His always crazy. And yeah. a lot of um, Apatow movies. Yeah. Yes. I mean, they grew up together. They have a long history together. And so Catherine Keener actually recommended yeah. Jonah Hill to Bennett Miller. Catherine Keener worked on uh, Capote with Bennett Miller, the yes. director. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Well, and there were 10 plus other actors that were right. going in that were all Oscar nominated actors. And so uh, obviously Jonah Hill's not known as a dramatic actor. No. So he made up an audition and invited Bennett Miller. Made up an audition, not an audition, I'm sorry. He made up a reading to a show he had already done, not knowing that Bennett Miller had seen the show. Invited Bennett uh -huh. Miller in for a reading, thought he was going to show him. He wrote this big part. Bennett Miller yeah. already saw the show. Yeah. Ha. Gave him the gave him the role two days later. And this is interesting. He said, Moneyball. Yeah. It's a story about people who have been overlooked because of preconceptions about what they can do. And, and Jonah if you Hill, think about it, Jonah yeah. Hill's characters, he's never done a yeah. real dramatic Totally role. represents the spirit exactly. of the exactly. I just thought, yeah. I just exactly. thought it was it was such a natural pulled back 
moment-driven yeah. performance. Right. That I, I, I'm just... And, th- you know, the most of the comedy came from Brad, actually. Right. On those things. He'd say, like, it's better work. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah, you know, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, normally that would be his, I, I mean, think, Jonah's role to say crud like that. Right. But the reason exactly. why it worked, the reason yeah. why it's funny is because that Jonah character is straight man. back. To, right. I mean, when he's, when the, uh, it's, uh, it's the deadline for the trades. They're yeah. in the office. All right. They're on the phones. They're going yeah. back and forth. And you really see Jonah's character just kind of be that kind of geeky, laid back kid when he couldn't even like high five him. It was just kind of like. Okay, yeah. that was so awkward you know? and funny. Yeah. But yeah. you know, when we were watching it, you were talking about how. Wow, he's doing such a great job acting. He's just like playing himself. Right. When he really wasn't playing himself, yeah. he was that was completely opposite of right. who he really is. Right. I feel that was out and, of the and box and the, for well, again, it, yeah, I was, it trying was to make very, it. very well. It, it, not it playing himself, diversity. but... That character? Or what did you mean? There were elements of Jonah Hill that when you see in an interview that he brought those to the forefront and kind of brought the other ones back. Yeah, when he's not and he on, just kind of right. and he's more quiet and thoughtful, yeah. then you completely see it. Right. Right, yeah. and no. you know, and good for him for, for being restrained and pulling it back and being small about it, because it really shows his versatility. Yes, got a, a nomination for crying yes. out loud. Yes, you know, it's so funny. I watched an interview on the Today Show with him and Brad Pitt, and he's just—it's so, like he's yeah, he's, he's, I mean, yeah, it's like he can't believe he's a great role yeah. for him. But you can oh tell you can he's t- so like. I see him kind of being a little smitten by sure. Brad, you yeah. know, just kind of like. Oh, it shows. Oh, you know, I, it yeah, really, I saw really, really shows. I saw a lot of the interviews, like he did one for YouTube and stuff, and yep. every one of them, he's still kind of blown away by what's happening. Yeah. And just, yes. And he is. Giddy well, he is a great work it. for he's it. Really, this was a movie to show how much he's grown right. as an actor and oh, the depth that, that he has. Let's talk a little bit about the look of it because we we did a touch yeah. on it because uh, you know Wally Pfister and his cinematography and. And we talked about the lighting and things like that, using fluorescent lights downstairs and creating this submarine. But they, they, Bennett was very specific. He wanted to go for that really natural, stripped down, no gloss look. Mm-hmm. They started talking about uh, films like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. you know, yeah. like uh, The Godfather and uh, sure. Parallax View and even The President's Men by, uh, I forget the uh, name of the cinematographer on that. I'll, I'll find that in a second. But it was interesting because he said that, you know, the president's men. And I remember the scene when Brad Pitt first is talking to Jonah Hill outside oh, yes. of the offices yes. of the Cleveland Indians. And they're down in the garage. Oh, okay, by the elevator. Yes. I mean, yeah. completely yeah. all the president's yeah, men with Robert Redford in Absolutely. the garage. Baseball. It was just, it was amazing. And, you know, if you think about it, when he comes walking through the cubicles, he goes, who are you? That that one could have been the Washington Post, was the Washington Post, with, with um, uh, Redford uh, and Brandt. Duffman, uh, Hoffman, you know, going through that sort of big maze. That also had that sort of feel, that, that yeah. look and that sort of, you know. Well, just thing. the cubicles alone is all the presidents, man. Yeah. They're always going through the cubicles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I was yeah. trying Gordon to Gordon Willis, by the way, is the cinematographer of those movies. Gordon Willis, All the Presidents, Man, Parallax View, Godfather. That's, so, But I yeah. thought it was extremely effective. Because, I, I mean, I was surprised at how stripped down it was. But then after a while, I, I, was, I just thought it was great. Yeah. It was it none was of that. Just, all in all, it was such an amazing film. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know what's interesting? is that the struggles that the studios went through yeah. and the struggles that the A's went through, I mean, the storyline, that their Moneyball is an odds-on favorite to win. Is it really? Here at the Oscars. Is it really? I mean, I didn't know yeah, it was an odds-on favorite. I, I, yeah. oh, okay. I didn't I know just, it, but do you know what the odds are for cool. Jonah Hill? For Jonah Hill? I don't know. Let's check Wouldn't the saving metric schedule. I would, I would think that it's would fair to say that, yeah. I mean, I, for supporting I, actor, I, yeah. I thought he was great. Brad, I want to see Brad walk off with an Oscar. I he really, did. really do. Okay, I, but I, here's a here's a bone of contention that I okay. d- discuss with you. Best supporting, Philip Seymour Hoffman doesn't get a nod. Hey, oh, he what do you mean? Awesome he was amazing. In this thing. He was, he was okay, awesome in this thing. You know, no the character that he actually played was upset because he said, I watched an interview with him, and he said, that is not how I act. He is heavier than me. Oh. I don't have those same mannerisms, and he feels. You know what? That sounds he, exactly wait, wait, he like feels he feels like it has hurt his career wow, because of wow. this movie and the way That's he was bold. depicted. By That's pretty bold. What, what did I say? Wow. Wow. What did I say at the beginning of the Philip movie? Philip Seymour Hoffman. Do you remember what I said? I said when it started. I said what's surprising is that that manager signed off on this portrayal. Because it is not a real complimentary portrayal of that manager. Right. But he Philip does yeah. villain well. Not to say this character was a villain. However, right. he just has that 
I, that I angst totally about believe him when, yeah, when I Philip's t- acting, I mean, yeah, he just but, okay, totally believe. We oh, have by the way, that, that goofy little walk that Brad Pitt would did at, at the yes, end of that one yes. thing, that was directly to Philip Seymour Hoffman because that's how he would walk around the set. Really? Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's why he threw cute. it back at him. That's little, cute. Uh, See, a little after buzz exclusive you were, right there. You, know, nice. you were talking about that with Phil Singer Hoffman. About, oh, he did such a great job. And I'm yes. like, well, of course. It's like, wait, where are the standards there? Of course he did a great job. He's a great actor. He's supposed to do a great job. Oscar this, I thought I was watching a baseball manager as opposed to watching an actor play a baseball Absolutely. manager. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the difference. That's because he's such a great actor. With well, a great cast, I, I think period. it's hysterical that the actual guy is all pissed off at it. Yes, I mean it's it was a movie. A long, Wait a minute, though. It Does, was a long interview, and he, yeah. does, he feels it's hurt him. But doesn't that quote kind of sound like the guy that Philip Seymour Hoffman was portraying? That's true. I mean, That's true. It's kind of like. Maybe he, and he, he did have a problem with the size. Yeah, I mean, the size. I, if he you did. can't get work as a manager he he based on what you me. did with the team, I, I think it's. I think it has more to do with something else than Philip Seymour Hoffman's portrayal of you. No, you could no. tell there was an underlying edge. There was an underlying edge in the interview. Something. Here, here's it with, with everything being said. Here's okay. what I liked about how they portrayed him was his point of view was absolutely legitimate. And he says, I'm just trying to line up the interviews I'm going to have to have when you screw up this season. So yeah. it, it was a great moment where they said it's not just Brad or Billy Bean, it's everybody's on the line on this thing. And everyone is either going to succeed or they're oh, going to yeah, walk away true. as a yes. failed experiment. And, and I thought it's, that was a wonderful moment for them to, you know, kind absolutely. of even that out a little bit. Yeah. This, this movie just kind of showed you what clear intention means that you go into it feet first. All in, no matter what the consequences. Billy Bean's back was up against the wall. He took charge, and it was his generation versus the older generation. It was something new, taking people outside of their comfort zone. Yep. You know, and that's why there was all that angst yeah, didn't coming he say from he, he, we either have to adapt or die. I think, yeah. right. I think that's a line he used. That's just and, life. And you do that's a be, metaphor that is, for life guys, as far yeah. as I'm exactly. concerned. Cool it's not just in Moneyball. That's with everything. And you do. You have to adapt or yeah. you will die. <laughs> we get passionate over here. Ouch. We're, we're, we're <laughs> what, do you, what do you guys think of uh, Karis Dorsey singing? Oh, the that's great. I thought it was so cute. For me, it was adorable. It's adorable. It's adorable. It's adorable. adorable. What was she, 13? It was a th- it's yeah. not it even was her song. A However, a I could have thought that. Lenka? It's from Lenka. Like, yeah. she sang that <laughs> song. Yeah, it's great. She's an Australian you know, there was, artist. I read a comment from some reviewer that said that it was melodramatic. and oh. What was melodramatic? The, her singing at the oh. end and all that other well. stuff. And I go, oh, it sounds like somebody who doesn't have kids or just can't even no, fathom that. I, I, I don't I have children, strong. and it had a huge impact, I felt, at the end of the show, because his relationship with his daughter, yeah. while it didn't show a whole lot of it, yeah, but if you read about Billy Bean outside of the show, yeah. him and his daughter are extremely close, and he even considered moving, vulnerable side moving to another Bean. team right. while she was going to college just to be close to her. And that's what I think is great about the movie, so is it, it really isn't about little, baseball. It's about no, a guy finding no, value so and sustenance in his life. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an onion. It's an, exactly, it's true, I mean, it's completely layered. So I know, we and it's, and it's so not, the, you know, your traditional yeah. studio movie. It doesn't have the same kind of vernacular. It doesn't have the montages. It doesn't have the, you know, but it, didn't need it. it has it didn't very need little it. music in it except for that song. No, I know. We were talking about the music, and it's like, there was music. Yeah, I didn't even so remember. much I think, of it is natural. I think you said it, or somebody said it, where it was the moments there wasn't music is how effective that soundtrack yeah. is. They just the soundtrack was is um, by Michael Dana, and he's done Imaginarium, Doctor um, Parnassus, Capote, Hearts of Atlantis, uh, Little Miss Sunshine, Five Hundred Days. He's got like almost a hundred credits in this thing. Wow. And um, I've found a lot of information about everything but Moneyball. Yeah. <laughs> he it's, it's, just didn't do a lot of interviews. Well, again, but, such restraint. Again, that naturalistic thing, rather than having some score swell you and tell you what no. to feel emotionally, yeah. you have to read it the all on, 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 on Brad's face. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's what I really, really enjoyed about it, was they weren't allowing the music to cue the scene. Right. That, that you, so you were just sitting in there with them and here's on a, the ride without any one of, one of the most interesting and effective ways of not having any music was in the 20th was it the 20th game? No, no, the game they lost. When the guy's at bat and he hits the ball. Okay. Yes. It goes silent. There's nothing. Right, right, right. You don't know if he hit, you don't know, you can't hear the crowd noise if it was oh, a home run. No. It's, okay. you just, and you stay on the batter as he's running. 
down, and, and he's watching the ball too. You don't know what's happened. There's no noise, and you have to wait and get your cues from the guys behind the guy running. Exactly. And they start jumping, and then you know what happened. Mm -hmm. But typically in a movie, you know, the natural... Da -da, da -da, da -da, I mean, all the music would kick in, all that stuff. Or whatever. Well, or, it does. Or, or the, the music sad has music such a huge impact on how you're going to feel in every scene. Yeah. That's right. And not they here. Took, not they here. took a lot of risk. They took a lot of risk and things they like took, that. They, they really did take a lot of risk because you were talking about it being an independent movie out of a yeah. studio. Mm -hmm. And it's, I guess you'd have to have a certain amount of power, I don't know, to uh, be able to Brad say, Brad Pitt. Well, there you go. Brad Pitt. Right. Exactly. But to be really able to say, Brad you've got to trust this. Yeah. You've got to trust, and no, we don't need more action sequence. Yeah. And we don't need this. We're going to go with the and, moments. Yeah, and yeah. based on their, uh, you know, they had it, they put it in front of audience their test screenings. Based on their test screenings, their test screenings were coming back. Yeah, yeah, leave it the way it is. So they, it was confirmed. Yeah. Everything that Brad and Bennett were trying to create, this naturalistic, leave it alone, just trust it. Exactly. It's finally exactly. confirmed. Mm -hmm. this, oh, okay, all right, all right. I'm just glad Less the project more. wasn't benched because it yeah. was at first. Yeah, clearly, the yeah. The studio benched it. They yeah, they pulled it. against them. All yeah, the they writers, were 10 million and the they, they had to start at square and one. They hadn't seen the light of day yet. Yeah. So kudos to Brad yeah. and Brad bringing on Bennett because money yeah. was what, made. What do you think it was like for um, Billy Bean to be in a room and they go, okay, so yeah, it's going to be a movie and um, yeah, Brad Pitt's going to play you. Well, it's or interesting. Go, I did read the... Oh, 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 no! The, there was an article. I can't remember where <laughs> I it read it. Well, he think it was never really going to yeah, happen but, Yeah, anyway, but Billy so Bean, like, he, eh. he had the re release form he had to sign and he was considering it. And the person he talked to was Michael Lewis, the author of the book. And okay. Goes, right. Again, Brad Pitt is, you know, you want Brad Pitt to be, what, what, and he goes, and he's looking at the release form, and Michael Lewis goes, sign it, they're never going to make the movie. <laughs> right. So he goes, okay, so he signs it. Last words. <laughs> yeah. I, so, I, never was, feel that I hope that Billy Bean is as proud of the movie and the acting that Brad did portraying him as, I mean, as I was as a fan just watching the film. Yeah. I, I, think, right. I, mean, I, I think it was amazing. All right, let's bring in a new guest. We have another guest. All right, we have uh, Madison Beatty. Madison Beatty. Hi. Hello. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. Oh, wonderful. Hi. Madison, nice. Good, good to meet you. Good. Thanks for joining so, us. So, what, 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 you worked with? Was he when he was young or when he was old? When he was uh, which part of the? Ah, oh, okay. Oh, you got the old. old. That sounds so horrible. Old, good looking or old baby? met him and I would say well he was like 60 when I met him so yeah. I don't know what I can say to that right. <laughs> but age does funny things yeah oh my goodness. He's, he's so so sweet I saw him at the premiere and he didn't recognize me because it had been like three years and oh, I was wow. going through my awkward stage so uh -huh. <laughs> but he recognized me at the premiere and he's That's so, nice. so sweet yeah, so how was that experience being on that set with him did you guys enjoy yourselves? Oh, it's on the crazy. Um, it was the first project I'd actually done, so already it was, oh my gosh, I'm on set. And then on top of that, it's a Brad Pitt set. And um, he, he really makes his sets just like family, and it was truly a great experience. Have he you nice? seen Moneyball then? He's great. He talks about his family like nonstop. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's got a lot of family to talk about. Yeah, that's true. That's a TV cute. show right there. 12, did you have an account I don't remember. I did, I did. And, and your I, thoughts? I really liked it. it you know, are it you was, a, are you a baseball fan? Yes, I am. All I, right. I, I don't watch a lot of sports, but I watch my baseball. Okay. And, and I, I loved Moneyball because it was a good family movie. I mean, it had it had my drama and it, the little girl, and it was so, so adorable. Oh, she was precious. Yeah, and then my brother was able to watch it because it had the baseball, and it, it's uh -huh. a good family movie for everybody. It was, it was great. Oh, cool. Yeah, I just couldn't get behind the mathematics of it all. I have a hard time with math. That's why baseball yeah. music didn't quite mesh. However, watching this movie, oh it was, I thought that it really told the story well of the game and the people that are involved in it. And Brad always talked about, as Billy Bean, the romance of, of baseball. Yeah. I feel like I really understood what he was saying. But, it's uh, so true. It, it, it's really beautifully told. I, I think that last scene is my favorite when he puts in the CD and he hears his daughter sing. And that was yeah. such a beautiful scene. And you know what? I think that CD was meant for him to listen to if he moved. Because did you hear on the CD? Oh, it says yeah, if you've already right. left, you're hearing the CD. Oh, okay. And yeah. she made him that CD and only maybe play that's the reason why he stayed. if you move. You remember? Yeah. I also remember the part in there, she's like, you're a loser, Dad. You're a loser, Dad. I was like, whoa. But I mean, I, I'll admit, I dropped a tear out of that because you could really see how vulnerable he was with yeah. his daughter, you know. 
outside of the ball field. That's just well, and to be able to show that soft spot, and I mean, I think it was beautiful, and it, especially when when a man usually is supposed to come, you know, they want to be all macho, and the fact that he was able Not to show that, that moment, I know, and he's such an old man. There's all the guys out there. There's talking. nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you know, that's one thing I really enjoyed about Moneyball was was that portrayal of Billy Bean of not being a big macho guy of not being like I'm in control mm. he, he there was only a few moments in that movie where he like had, dr dropped the hammer yeah. other than that he just had his agenda he moved yep. through it and he got right. people around him to say yeah. okay one of my favorite weird. moments is when you know he's, he's great on the phone he's making all these deals and then he's in his car and he goes what the hell am I doing exactly. <laughs> Yeah. There you go. As, as confident exactly. as he is, and he's alone in his truck. Uh -huh. What the hell am I doing? Uh -huh. and then yeah. Everything just kind of falls apart. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The fact I'm that they know. were able to show all different sides of that was, I loved it. I really did love it. I, I hope it does well at the Oscars. Now you said you're a baseball fan. Uh, somewhat. Somewhat. I'm, I'm, I'm really <laughs> okay. bad at like the names of the players. Who's your team? But okay. Who's your team? I'm right Dodgers. 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 Okay. No, hometown I'm girl. Like I'm from Denver, so what? it used to be like the Rockies. Sure, but, but now you're a hometown girl. Here's the Dodger dog, yeah. and I have a Dodger Snuggie. <laughs> oh, you got the Snuggie action going. Yeah. Denver's got to have better food. <laughs> I don't know. It does you have better barbecue. certainly have a better airport. It has better yes, food. You know, the airport opened the day I was born. Really? Yeah, February wow. 28th, uh, 1995. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> it's crazy, it. very crazy. Yeah, I love Denver. Beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah, it's it's a good place. Uh, but so I gotta ask. What, I mean, and I know you've kind of indicated how great it is working with someone like Brad. You know, when he's on set and he kind of commands a certain. He's got an aura about him. He does. <laughs> he does. What's it, what's it like to be? I mean, you're you're brilliant in Benjamin Button, and Thank to you have so you kind of interacting, like, what was that like for you? Um, for me, you, when you first get to set, literally running through your mind is, oh my gosh, I'm working with David Fincher and and Brad Pitt and Kate Blanchett, and and a part of me didn't really know it to the caliber that it was, but I just knew they were really big Which names. Was probably and they were, not a bad thing, right? No, <laughs> I mean these days if I don't know who someone is, Kate I won't Blanchett. look them up because no. it, it trips me out. So you get there and you're really nervous and. I have very sensitive skin, so I break out when I get nervous. And so I remember walking in the makeup trailer, and then Kate Blanchett yeah. was actually there for a wig fitting. <sighs> and she immediately turned to me and said, Madison, it's so nice to meet you. And then that's the thing about those kind of sets, though, when, when it's those people that have been doing it long enough to know exactly how it works, they really make you feel right at home. And to have that opportunity, because when you get there and you're stressed, it's way too hard to focus on your work. Yeah. But once you are able to relax, then it's just about the work and they nothing about who they are. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Is there, is there anything you're currently working on that you can let us know about? Or yes. What's um, that? I actually just oh, she starts glowing. <laughs> oh, I like it. I, I'm very excited. I just finished working on The Master, which is the new Paul Thomas Anderson film, and it stars Joaquin Phoenix and Amy Adams. Wow. And um, we're waiting to hear if it'll go to Cannes. Oh, and nice. if not, then probably Vancouver. And so... Oh, I'm Current. Canadian, so... <laughs> well, I, I'll go for Cam. That's what we'll I, certainly I, look yeah. at. Call the math. Either, either or. I, either I'd love would be to great. try Vancouver so. or Cam. <laughs> oh, you're going to wear a bathing suit in one of them. I'm not getting any love over here. Yeah, well, listen, we got to wrap this up. We want to thank you so much for stopping by and talking to us and sharing with us. It was sure. fun. We'll thank look you guys. Madison Beatty, everybody. We'll look for the Masters. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. All right. All right well, we got, we got final thoughts because we got to get out of here. Anything you want to say about Moneyball? I just... Odds on favor. It's, it's, yeah, like I said, going back to that comment, you know, being the odds on favor, considering all its yeah. tribulations and whatnot that it went through, and, and the only thing that I can say is this movie made me realize okay, we got to wrap that it up, guys. That'll be the final thought. They're giving me the sign. we got to go. So we want to thank you so much it. for joining us here on another AfterBuzz TV podcast here at the Kari Feinstein Oscar Style Lounge and Gift Suites. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Buzz you later. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.